All right, today we are in four flight planning a instrument flight. We're going to go from Aurora State, which is Uniform Alpha Oscar. So in the search bar, the top right of the screen, we're going to select search, K U A O. Now we're going to go from there to Medford, Medford, Oregon. So K M F R. And then we're going to select go. It's going to draw a line directly to between those two points. Now we want to select a departure leaving Aurora in the center of the screen there. To do this, we're going to go to Procedure. In the top right, you see the button that says Procedure. We're going to select Departures from KUAO. Departures. A little screen will pop up and it'll show you the general area of where those waypoints are. So UBG to the west, Galera to the east, and GNNET2 to the south. So we're going to go Ginnett to the south. We're going to add it to the route. And as you see, it drew that line of how to get to Ginnett. Now the nice thing about this is it is terped and or what they call surveyed for altitude, a safe altitude to get you there. Now, to get to MFR, we need to choose an altitude. Well, the simplest way is to drag our route over to a known Victor Airway, a known published airway. So we're gonna go navigation, more, we're gonna select the Eugene, we're gonna insert that into the route. And what this allows us to do is not have to pull out a sectional draw a course and find the highest altitude and add 2,000 feet to it because this is mountainous terrain. Now, I already know that we want to do uh, an approach into 1-4, runway 1-4 going into KMFR. So because of that, we're going to take our route, we're going to drag it over to Roseburg, there you are, and we're going to insert that into the route. Now, we can select an approach right now, so we're going to go Procedure again in the top right. Approach into KMFR. And as you can see, we have a little miniature depiction of our route, our course already. So Approach. And uh, ILS-14 lines us right up with that. So for today's purposes of planning, we're going to select that. There's SAMI, so we either we can go to SAMI or we can go vectors to final. SAMI is already highlighted, so we're just going to push add to route. When we do that, the approach plate already comes onto the screen. Now, if you hit the gear button, the setup button on the top left, there's several things we can do with this. In the bottom portion of that, we can adjust the opaqueness. So we have the approach plate is barely visible, or we go back to the, and we can adjust it to the center, to the right. So as we get closer, may, we may want to have more of the approach plate up. All right, so this is how one way to scan a cat, one way to plan a route to go to Medford, Oregon from Aurora, Oregon. All right, so, on the previous video, I programmed a flight in four flight on an iPad to go from Aurora, Oregon to Medford, Oregon. So today we're in a EC225LP Super Puma, and this is a CMA 9000 FMS. I've just turned it on. I haven't touched any buttons yet. The aircraft is in a hangar and does not have good visibility on the satellite so that we will have issues with that but i'm going to program that flight so in our scratch pad which is the bottom line we have uh, faults so i'm going to clear out the faults by pushing the clear button when we first turn on the fms we have the current active database and this particular database goes from April 22nd to May 19th of 2021. 
And then the secondary database, which is expired, is right here. Now, if for some reason the active database was expired and the secondary database was not expired, to change that, we would select the secondary database. It then populates into the scratch pad. I'm not going to do it, but we could select the right line select key on the active database and it will change it to that database. Now, matter of fact, if I change it, it's going to database out of date, so it won't even let me select it. All right. So to program the route, we're going to go route. Origination is Aurora, Oregon. So Kilo, Uniform, Alpha, Oscar. We're going to put that as the origin, origination. Our destination for this flight is Mike Foxtrot Romeo, or Kilo Mike Foxtrot Romeo, with the, which is Medford, Alaska. We're going to put that as our destination. We're going to push Execute. Uh, we have a discontinuity. We're not going to worry about that because it's just it doesn't know how it wants us to get there. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the departure arrival. Now, as you notice, it generally is route, departure, legs, program. They're kind of in a, a specific order here. So we've already done the route. We're going to go to the departure arrival now. So K Aurora, K uh, Uniform Alpha Oscar, we're going to depart. Now, I already know on the previous plan we went to GNNET2. So that's our departure procedure. We're going to go on that departure via runway 17 because it's already pointed to the south. Now let's say we get there and ATC tells us we want to go 35. All we do is push 17 again and we can change that to 35. But we don't want to do that. We want to, to go runway 17. Now we're going to push execute. Now there's many ways to skin a cat. We want to go find an arrival, an approach at our destination. So we could go Approach departure right here, or we could go approach departure right here. So we're going to push approach departure, arrival, or approach. Now we're going to do the ILS 14. So we'll select the ILS 14. We're going to go there via SAMI. We're going to execute. If you see, the green light is lit up for execute. All right. Now from that, we already did route, we already did departure arrival. Now we're going to go legs. Okay, legs. So we have the departure procedure, which is flight runway heading 172 to 1,000 feet before making any turns, and then it's going to take us direct to Gannett via 5,000 feet, and then Sammy, and then Vista. But there's a discontinuity because it's still, the GPS does not know how to get from Gannett to Sammy. Now I could just select Sammy and put it in the Gannett or get it over that uh, discontinuity and it would delete that. But um, another consideration we need to think about is this is GPS direct and we got to determine how to select the appropriate altitude. So I don't want to go on a VFR sectional and draw a course and find the highest obstacle and add 2,000 feet because this is mountainous terrain. So to keep it simple, we're just going to go on a Victor Airway. So the next uh, leg is going to be the Eugene VOR. So E U G, which is Eugene. I'm going to put that right there. All right. So now it knows Gannett to Eugene VOR, but there's still discontinuity. Well, the next thing we want to do is the Roseburg VOR. So Romeo Bravo Golf, boom. All right. So now we still have a discontinuity because it's not quite sure, but I know that we can go from Roseburg on the Victor Airway to get to Sammy. So we're just going to select Sammy. It's going to populate in the scratch pad. We're going to go to previous page. We're going to put Sammy in the discontinuity, and then we're going to push execute. So that's the basic flight plan. Gannett, Eugene, Roseburg, Sammy, next. And then these are the fixes, Vista, Amaze, Osage, Runway 14, um, and that's all associated with ILS 14 into uh, Medford.
One other thing we could do is it has pubis altitudes over here. Now this aircraft does not have vertical guidance, meaning it will not change altitude. It will only fly at altitude that we tell it to fly. So it'll maintain altitude, but it, it's not smart enough to know when it needs to climb and descend. So as a reference for myself, I just know that I want to be at 5,000 going to Eugene. So I'm going to select 5,000 and I can put it right here. Now it knows, but like I said, the aircraft's not going to climb. That's just for my reference. Going to Roseburg, down to Sammy, we want to be at 7,000, which is the initial approach fix altitude at Sammy. So we're going to say 7,000 in the scratch pad. I'm going to select that right there. Now we're going to push execute. So now as we're flying down the route, the pink will be the highlighted point that it, it's going to. That's in our legs, all right? We can come in here to program, and it's going to look at, now, if we had satellite, it would give us more information, but right now it's saying the RMP, which is the required navigational performance for this segment of the route, is 2.0. That means 2.0 nautical miles. The AMP, which is the actual navigational performance, also known as the aircraft navigational performance, is 0 .03. So, as long as this number is less than this number, you have a adequate navigation to fly this route. Another thing we can do, we can go to initial reference here, we go to nav status, um, we're going to look at the GPS, so this is going to tell us how many satellites, so right now satellite tracking is 9, satellites visible is 20, so that's, that's the uh, what our satellites are tracking right now. Back to NISO reference. NISO reference. Uh, I wanted to look at the nav here. The nav status again, predictive rain, KMFR, ETA. So this would tell us the predictive rain. Now people ask me, or people wonder what what is rain? Rain is receiver autonomous integrity monitoring. Now in aviation we have several bits, built-in tests. We have an I-bit, so when you push a button to test a system, that's an I-bit, which means initiated bit. We have a P-bit, which is the power on bit test. When the aircraft is powered on, it's a bit. And then there's a C-bit, which is a continuous built-in test. So a brain is similar to a C-bit, where it's constantly checking the status of the navigation to ensure that it's working correctly for you. Now, we're going to look up here at our NAVD page, okay? So we have NAVD, we have, as you see, we have a NAV selected. On the top left, we could change it from NAV sources. So what we do in the NAV, so this is the NAVD screen, and this is the FMD screen. So the long range stuff we put in our A NAV, and then to navigate to that, we have the A nav button right here, or nav D button. We would select the nav D button. When we get to down to do the approach, we will have the ILS selected. Now we want to make sure we select ILS and then we go FM decouple, and then we would go through the different navigational options to select that ILS. Because the aircraft will fly the vertical guidance of an ILS, it will not fly any other vertical guidance. So if there was an LPV or an LNAV or a VNAV, it would not do that. Alright, on to the next video.